Hey builders, uh, welcome back to Not A Model. I'm riding and I am building a real aircraft at home. Last night, BAMS dropped the update that we've all been waiting for. The engineering test results for the parts, for laser cut parts, uh, as well as a finalized order sheet to, for the disposition of those parts. What's the severity of the problem for each, each one? Um, if you were the early bird, or I guess night owl last night, uh, and downloaded it right away, you probably wanna go download another copy today. It already changed this morning. Um, clear your browser cache if it looks like it's the same one from last night. Um, what they've done is uh, first in, uh, a, f a more detailed report of you know what caused the problem uh, and, and how they're addressing it. Uh, so read through that, that's a few pages long. Um, but they also um, categorize, categorize the parts by severity depending on the model aircraft that you are flying. So uh, the red uh, groups are yes, for sure. Uh, these are structural, they're a problem, replace them all. Um, the uh, yellow is the next category. Um, those would be uh, high stress areas that should get replaced as well. Um, the purple category is yes, they should get replaced, but maybe not for everybody, tail wheel versus nose wheel. Uh, and there's a problem with the nose wheel bracket, you may not have to replace that one, it doesn't affect you. The next one is blue, which is listed as acceptable for use. That's the one I'm seeing as the sort of latest, biggest um, contention out there in the community. Um, what is acceptable for vans may not be acceptable by um, every builder, uh, as well as potentially insurance companies or people purchasing your used aircraft. Lastly, the uh, green category, which is things like cover plates and panels, uh, potentially they didn't have any holes, cut them at all. You were match drilling those as part of the build process. So those, they are uh, not advising that they need replacing. My particular RV-10 empennage kit has a lot of parts, uh, but certainly not as much as what was on the original sheet from a few months ago. Um, the parts I thought needed to be replaced in my horizontal stabilizer are now considered okay. I will obviously uh, inspect those and decide for myself, but it is certainly better than um, known bad parts. Uh, so I, I think it's some good news there, um, but you know, cautiously optimistic at this point. The one curious part that I found is on the RV-10 tail kit page and other pages, uh, it's broken up into two sections. Parts produced through June of 2023 was one group, and parts produced quote, limited runs and then converted to punch kits. But I don't know what that means. Um, was that bottom section stopped before June or continued after June? Uh, I, I wanted to get some clarity on, on those. Um, my guess is that some of those were produced in batches where they got commingled. So there might've been some punch kits and some laser cut pieces all in the same bin at the warehouse and the, uh, the, the crating folks picked whatever was next. Um, I will say during my build of my ump kit, which is done, I didn't see any of the really nasty stuff that other builders are posting photos of or it's in that engineering document. Uh, I do remember seeing some instances of the little notch um, and, and I worked hard to file those out as I was building. Some of them got, you know, up drilled and you know, to a bigger rivet. Some of them just a little filing took care of it. I think there might be a wide gap between the hard to identify laser cut parts and easy to identify laser cut parts. Um, I feel like I got lucky during that picking process, but luck is not a strategy when building an airplane. So I will be spending a lot more time inspecting the parts listed as blue on this sheet. And uh, I think that'll become easier as I open some of these structures back up. Um, personally, I intend to replace and redo my entire vertical stabilizer. It was the first assembly I did and mistakes were made. I have some oops rivets. I have some smiles in the skin, you know, when I was learning how to use a rivet gun the first time back last year. And 
you know, my technique was new, I'm way better at it now. So I have to replace both spars anyway, front and back. Uh, so purchasing the, the skin and the extra ribs, uh, it's fine for me. Um, honestly, it'll probably take less time than doing a careful tear down, drilling out all those rivets, um, you know, inspecting the ribs that are listed as questionable uh, and, and building it all back up again. So coming from scratch, I think will be the easier task for me. Um, the elevators, I think will be in the same boat. Um, the, again, the rear spar has to get replaced. And at that point, you've got to take so much of the skin off to get at it. Uh, and you're tearing into that pro sealed trailing edge that we all work so hard on. Uh, I can't imagine those little foam blocks back there are going to survive the process. So the parts were not terribly expensive on the ones that Vans uh, didn't list as laser cut, but you can buy them anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, for me, the biggest effort I think is back here in the tail cone. Everything from uh, this number 10 bulkhead back um, is laser cut and that is high stress areas. You've got your horizontal stabilizer, your vertical stabilizer, uh, and by proxy, your rudder and your elevators all attached there. So that one's no messing around, that all gets replaced. Um, thankfully, I, I took the time when I was building this the first time and I built some of these little 3D printed templates for all the brackets uh, that we had to fabricate. So I put it in CAD and, and uh, designed up all the lengths, where do the holes go, uh, get all the angles right, and then print, 3D printed a, a little plant template. So I just mark it on here, uh, cut it and drill it. And, you know, I found it a really big time saver the first time and even more so the second time I have to rebuild these. So I'll throw up a video of that, how, the, how that worked uh, when I can. Um, so this morning, I was pretty ready to uh, do the ordering process. I'd already created a spreadsheet of all the parts I needed. Um, what I appreciate on their new portal is that uh, how easy it was. It allowed me to just pick my empennage kit off the list, uh, and then it broke the parts by severity and color. So the reds were all on the top. You just showed the maximum number you could buy for your kit. Um, so I picked the maximum quantity for every one of the reds, hit add to cart, there you go. The, the blue section, I'm not gonna replace all of the blue. Uh, I found no issues with the uh, ribs going forward in my empennage, for example, um, for now. Um, so I think as I tear this part apart and start really inspecting those holes that already have the rivets in them and I can't see, uh, the, the riveted piece, um, then I'll make another decision. Maybe I have to go buy uh, some more ribs and, and tear into this more than I thought. Um, the other thing the, the van site lets you do is not just the drop down of what they know are laser cut parts, but there's a little search item where you can put in the other, uh, the other pieces that are not laser cut. For example, Again, I'm redoing my entire vertical stabilizer. So putting in the part number for that vertical stabilizer skin allows you to add that to your cart. You obviously have to pay for it, um, but they're giving a discount. Um, so I honestly think it's a pretty reasonable, uh, pretty reasonable discount for this. I'm choosing to do that. I don't have to do that. Uh, I don't expect Vans to give me a free part when there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I'm choosing that because I know I can do a better job on that particular assembly on my second try. Uh, in the end, when you're done with this ordering process, you save your cart and you can come back to it off and on as you go, as you read through the plans, that's fine. Go to lunch, come back. Uh, you don't lose your progress, um, but you don't really submit the purchase at the end either. Uh, Vans wants to get a bunch of, of these orders queued up I assume they want to see, you know, how many people are ordering right away. What is, what are people ordering? Um, some of the prices for the blue items are TBD. Uh, so I get it. This isn't just a regular web order where I just get to pick it. I think if you wanted to do that, you probably could pay full price. If you want it for free, we're going to go through their process. So that's fine. Um, my cart is done. I am in, a hold. So they're going to reach out to me at some point and finalize my order and give me a quote for the shipping. And there we go. Uh, so I'm back waiting for parts. Um, 
I can confidently start drilling things out like this whole tail assembly and start exposing things for more inspection. Uh, once I remove some laser cut parts, um, I, again, I might decide to add more to the order. I wanna make sure I do this aircraft right. This is going to be my plane for as long as I can fly it and keep it medical. Uh, I intend to pass this down to my kids and let them fight over it. Um, when I'm gone, I'm going to haunt them in the plane and you know, ride around with them while they're flying as a ghost. If somebody else buys this aircraft, I'm gonna haunt them too. I'm gonna to ride around in this thing for a very long time. So I want it safe. Thanks for listening. Cheers, y'all.